we are guided by the rule of law and the Constitution. Madam Speaker, I have no problem with the Senate amending its calendar. The biggest problem that I have is once we amend our calendar and we introduce strangers to sit on the floor of the House for us to be able to interrogate them, ask them questions. Madam Speaker, the biggest challenge that I had with us passing the motion of allowing cabinet secretaries or amending our standing orders to allow cabinet secretaries to sit on the floor of the House is because Article 153.3 of the Constitution is quite clear. Article 153.3 of the Constitution states clearly, and I quote, that a cabinet secretary shall attend before a committee of parliament, either National Assembly or the Senate, to be able to, to respond to questions that might be asked. If you look at Article 153.4, Madam Speaker, each and every cabinet secretary is required by the law to provide regular updates to Parliament of matters within their docket. So, Madam Speaker, one of my biggest pet peeves is that should I be a legislator that come here to defend the rule of law, or should I be a legislator who comes here and rubber stamp on issues which I which cannot be able to withstand any form of litigation. Madam Speaker, the biggest challenge that I have, and I was waiting for the Secretariat to be able to demystify what it means by a Cabinet Secretary sitting here on this side. And yesterday when I was listening to the Speaker giving his communication, the Speaker, in fact, even assigned a seat for the cabinet secretary, where the cabinet secretary is going to be sitting. So he asked me, I went around the entire narrow county, I spent millions of shillings asking for votes to be able, and I was tasked with the duty to represent the people. I was given the privilege by the people to come and represent them here. Yet somebody who is appointed comes in and sit down when the Senate, uh, when the, uh, the Speaker is presiding over a House to be able to answer questions. I think it's about time, Madam Speaker, that we define our system of governance in this country. Are we a parliamentary system? Are we a presidential system? And, uh, or do we just have our own system, which we call it the Kenyan system? If so, we now go into the Constitution and amend the Constitution, taking into consideration what is required when it comes to amending the basic structure of the Constitution. Madam Speaker, if I sit here and approve and I say I support this motion, I'll be committing an offense. I'll be violating the Constitution. If the Chair can tell me that on, the, on that specific day, when the Cabinet Secretary is seated here, the House is converted into a committee, I will have no beef. But as it is, this is a matter, when I sit here, I will be giving fodder for the people who will go to court, and they will say, Senator Lekina also sat there and supported an illegality. Madam Speaker, I think I want to be considered as having been different when it comes to the due process of the law. I want to be remembered in history as a person who stood firm and said no. The day we convert this house into a committee of the whole, by all means, any, any witness can come. The law is quite clear. Article 125 of the Constitution, our Parliamentary Powers and Privileges Act, Section 18 and Section 19, gives us the power to be able to summon or invite witnesses to be able to, uh, uh, to interrogate them and for them to be able to give us information that we need so that we can, we can perform our task. So, Madam Speaker, without belaboring, I oppose this motion because, one, it goes against the basic structure of our Constitution. That is issue number one. Number two, Madam Speaker, I oppose this motion because it violates Article 153 of the Constitution.